Welcome, everybody, to our ninth Hangout on Air, hosted this evening by the Google Developer Experts from around Africa. The GDE Hangout on Air is a um, community meetup. It's a nice way for all of us to meet together once a month, um, almost like face to face, um, and share with you things that we've learned um, over the last month, things that are exciting for us, and give us a little bit of opportunity to geek out together. Um, if you've got any questions that you'd like to have answered, feel free to post it into the live chat, and we'll get around to answering them towards the end of the show. Um, the video for the show will also be available shortly afterwards. And if you'd like to tweet, have a use of um, the hashtag Google Africa Devs. This month, we're going to have a recap of what's new on Google Cloud. There's a lot of things that have been released over the last couple of months, and we'd like to share some of the things that are most exciting for us. On the call today, we have myself, Dale, a Cloud GDE from Cape Town in South Africa. And I'm going to let the other Google developer experts introduce themselves, um, starting with um, some of our new, uh, two of our new experts, uh, Kimoon and Mike. Welcome, Kimoon. Cool. Thanks, Dale. Um, hi, I'm Kimoon, and I'm a new Google Cloud developer for Africa, specifically in the Johannesburg region. I'm also a Google Cloud trainer. And I specialize in big data and machine learning on the Google Cloud platform. I'm also an organizer for various GDG cloud groups, which are in South Africa, that includes Johannesburg, Durban, and Cape Town. So please join our meetup groups as I do a lot of talks. And please join me and the team to learn more about the Google Cloud platform. Thanks. Over to you, Mike. Uh, Mike, your mic. Unmute. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now that that's out of the way. Hi, I'm Mike. Um, I'm a Web Technologies GDE, um, which basically means I can be obnoxiously pro JavaScript and web. Um, and yeah, so, so that's me. Um, I'm a community guy. I like organizing meetups. Um, we actually have one that's going to start just after this Hangout. Um, I organize the uh, Josie JS meetup and the Docker meetup and um, Yes, I'm prone to hyperbole, so sorry. <laughs> Who's next? Vivian, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Vivian Akini. I work at Google as a developer ecosystem community manager um, based out of Nairobi. Hi, everyone. Um, Kenneth here. Um, Sorry, my video is not on. Um, I'm Kenneth Kinyanji um, from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm one of the Google experts. Uh, and uh, for my part time, I lead the GDG Cloud Nairobi. Thank you. On the call, uh, got Kenny as well. Yeah, hi. <laughs> I'm I'm still I'm still trying to figure out how it works. Um, <laughs> hi, my name is Kenne. I'm a Google Developer Expert on Product Design um, out of Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah, so uh, back in Lagos, uh, there is a local meetup for designers. It's called Usable. Uh, please check it out and uh, take time to attend if you can. And yeah, very excited to what we're about to learn today. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's Alex here, Android GDE from Cape Town. Uh, I've been around for a while, so if you've seen any of these Hangouts before, you've probably seen this face. Um, here to learn a bit more about what's been happening in the cloud space. It's over to you, Dale. Thanks, Alex, and thanks, everyone, for introducing yourselves. The main theme this evening is what's new on Google Cloud. And uh, we're going to be chatting about some of our favorite tech that's been re released over the last couple of months. Um, one of my, two of the announcements that I've got or that have interested me, the one is that IoT core is generally available. Um, I come from an embedded background, so IoT has always been pretty close to my heart. And um, to see it go from public beta in September last year to generally available in February this year has been amazing. Um, 
So IoT Core, in brief, it allows you to connect um, IoT devices um, to the um, to Google's cloud platform to manage them as well as receive data from those devices. Companies like Blaze, which is one of the bike sharing startups in the US, uh, sends GPS data, accelerometer data, all sorts of atmospheric data from their bikes to the IoT core. And from there, um, information that you send in can then get sent um, via like, PubSub to multiple topics. Um, so you could have, for instance, GPS data go into cloud functions and accelerometer data then could be sent off to cloud data flow for real time batch uh, or batch analysis, as well as in stored for long term in BigQuery. Um, so it's nice to see that the ecosystem is um, you know, supporting open protocols like MQTT, as well as HTTP for simpler interfaces, um, and then allowing us to, to do a lot of machine learning on the back end with that information. Um, a bunch of other regions have been um, released or, or come live in the last few months. And uh, starting with Sao Paulo and Brazil, is Montreal and Canada, Mumbai and India, and then the Netherlands. And coming soon are data centers in Osaka in Japan, Hong Kong, Los Angeles, and Finland. Um, so in brief, a region is a geographic area. Um, like for, for instance, my company runs out of the US Central One region, which is in the Iowa in the United States. And um, within each region is, is generally one or more zones. Uh, and these are failure zones. So if any one zone goes down, your compute can fail over to one of the other zones in that same region. Um, and things like uh, VMs, disks, are all attached to a specific zone. Um, and zones are linked to each other by high capacity um, fiber. Um, and for instance, I run my setup on Kubernetes across three zones in one region um, in Iowa and the US Central one. So if any one zone goes down, I can run the rest of my or scale up my cluster on the other two zones to take over. So essentially have zero downtime. But making a decision on where to put um, your region if, is quite um, quite challenging. You know, there's a lot of regions around the world, and how do you know which one to use? So then there's several aspects that we look at. Um, ping time is one of them. And if you head over to gcping.com, then you can have a look. Uh, it's a, a website, which let me see if I can share it here very quickly. Um, Sorry, let me just share my tab. So look at um, oh, uh, GC ping. Uh, what it does is when it's, you go to the page, it pings each of the regions, a, a small server in each one, and works out where the closest ping time is. So in this case, it's um, London in the UK is 176 milliseconds away from Cape Town. Um, Belgium, Netherlands, so effectively Europe is pretty close. Then the US, and then further afield in Asia and Asia Pacific. Um, so if, you, if latency is important for you, then fire up this website and have a look at which uh, region is the closest to you. Um, then if we, something else to keep in mind is uh, cost. Generally, the cost uh, is cheapest out of US regions so in the United States, like US Central One and the West and the East regions there. Um, then often Europe is the second cheapest with Asia Pacific being a little bit more expensive. So for an example, if you ha host an N1 standard one VM, which is a pretty normal VM a lot of us use, in the US that will cost $24 per month. In London region, it'll be $31. In Sao Paulo, $38. So if you're a cash strap startup um, then, and prepared to sacrifice a little bit on ping times then, um, and optimize for cost, then the US is definitely the cheapest. Um, and then, of course, features is another one. Um, things like cloud functions, which are still in beta, are available only in the US central region. Um, cloud spanner. Google's uh, globally distributed, uh, strongly consistent database is also only available in a handful of regions. So it's not completely rolled out across the world. Um, and Cloud ML Engine is also um, one of the new features that's available in US Central, um, and I think in Europe, but not yet in um, Asia Pacific area. So if you need to balance um, latency, costs, and features to decide uh, which uh, region to put your code in. 
of course, nothing quite in Africa yet. Um, we, we're pushing hard for that. Um, so, you know, if you, you're keen, keep on letting everybody know that uh, we need to be on the radar as Africa grows. Um, and we'd love to have a region here as well. Um, and uh, but there is the Google, the global load balancer, which provides uh, SSL termination and lots of hosted points of presence around Africa. So, for instance, the, the hosted point of presence is available in Johannesburg, in South Africa, in Mombasa, in Kenya, and Lagos in Nigeria. And that's where traffic enters on Google's dedicated fiber backbone. Um, so it's a lot. Uh, less latency and contention. We're going over their fiber instead of the um, the general internet. And there's edge caches in many cities. Um, so if you want to see where the edge caches are, um, the points of presence and the, the data centers are, uh, we'll be putting up a link on Google after the show. But if you want to head over there now, it's peering.google.com. So have a look there. I'm going to head hand over to Kimun now to tell us about what he finds exciting in cloud. Cool. Thanks, Dale. I have three things for you guys today that I'm really excited about. So the first thing is the 96 virtual CPUs that Google recently launched. And it is a virtual machine, or as we call it, a compute engine that can be configured with 96 virtual cores. So this is exciting for those of you who are compute hungry. Personally, I am very compute hungry as I use it to decrease my time on my personal projects. That involves gene assembly. Now, assembling of genes does not usually require lots of computing power, but having the ability to parallelize the tasks into a different course can save you a lot of time. So I install a software called Cufflinks on my machine, and I benchmark the 96 virtual CPU to the 64 virtual CPU machine. And I save up, on average, roughly 40% of my time. So how awesome is that? So please have a look at that if you're compute hungry. The second topic that I want to talk to you guys about is the cloud TPUs. So it's finally in beta, which means that it's publicly available. So just a brief background, TPUs, or TensorFlow Processing Unit, is a chip that Google themselves create for specifically training machine learning models. And usually, training models require enormous amounts of computation, which is traditionally done using either CPUs or GPUs. Now, one can usually expect to wait weeks in getting the model trained. In my case, I use my GPU at home to classify images of myself and my brother, and it takes nearly two weeks to train the model. Now, using those TPUs, I brought that time from weeks to hours very easily. Now, for those geeks out there, each TPU can process up to 180 teraflops, whereas my graphic cards can only do nine teraflops. So FLOPS is short for floating point operations per second and is a measure of the processing speed. So teraflops are a trillion floating operations per second. Just a brief background. Now, compared to my GPU, essentially I have 20 times more processing power in the cloud. Now, this does not mean that it's expensive. So it costs around six and a half US dollar per cloud TPU per hour. And if you run this for a day, that is less than $200. It's cheap, it's a great product, and if you hate slow model training like me, go have a play around with it. Now, the third interesting or exciting product that is released is GPUs in Kubernetes. Well, if you're already using containers, you can now use GPUs in Kubernetes engine. So using GPUs in Kubernetes engine is in beta and can turbocharge your compute intensive applications like machine learning, image processing, and financial modeling. And by packaging your CUDA workloads into containers, you can benefit from massive powers of Kubernetes GPU whenever you need it without having to manage hardwares or even virtual machines. And essentially, it applies a taint and toleration technique, which is a technique to ensure only parts requesting GPUs will be uh, scheduled onto nodes with GPUs and prevent parts that don't require GPUs from running on them. 
And this is great if you use some product called StackDrive on the Google Cloud Platform, so you can visualize these metrics. So you can see the GPU duty cycles for different jobs just to see whether it's working correctly as you intended to. An example of who uses this product is a ride-sharing pioneer called Lyft. For instance, they use GPUs in Kubernetes Engine to accelerate their training of their deep learning models. So if you guys are interested in all three of these new products on the GCP platform, please have a read on the Google Cloud Platform website. There's lots of information on it. So thanks. Um, over to you, Mike. Yeah, yeah, remember to unmute this time. OK. Um, so my point is, I'm not a cloud guy, so it's pretty tenuously cloud related. But uh, a big part of the progressive web app narrative is performance, right? Things need to be fast. Um, but to performance optimize your site, it, it's very difficult without an appropriate data source. So I'm going to quickly share a screen here. Um, one of the, the nice things that's come out recently is the Chrome Experience Report. Let me just find experience report, which is based off of PageSpeed Insights data um, for people who have opted in to sync their browsing history and um, have usage statistics enabled. And this gives us some cool stuff that basically gets pumped into BigQuery, and there's the cloud link. Um, and in BigQuery, you can then take a look at these data sets and you can see, well, what are my uh, first content full paint and other uh, key page insights metrics for various different endpoints and broken up by country, which is incredibly useful for us because finding local data is very difficult. So what I've done is I've written, um, I've taken some of the, the data set for South Africa. So this is browsing history from South Africa and going to a website that um, without picking on anyone, it's my company's website. So if the performance is awful, blame us. Um, and then you can take a look at something like the bin density, uh, which basically gives you the effect of um, frequency to first contentful paint. You can simply export the stuff to Google Sheets and chart it as so. And you can see that we've got a, a real peak at around a second um, and a lot of data under three seconds, essentially, um, which is not a great um, first contentful paint. And it also shows that loading time is not necessarily a scalar value, but it's a lot more of a, a range of values. Um, and I think, I think that's it. So data is always useful. And I'm going to stop presenting now. Um, and on to the next part. Thanks, Mike. And, and thanks, Kimun. Uh, this brings us to the next section of our Hangouts today, uh, talking about some of the meetups and study jams that we have um, around the continent. Uh, Kenneth is going to tell us about what he's doing in Nairobi. Hi, everyone. So um, it's always great to be on this show. Thanks, Dale. Um, so for the past uh, um, a couple of months, uh, we started, um, James Moy and myself, uh, Cloud GDEs in Kenya, um, started uh, Cloud GDG Cloud Nairobi. And part of uh, 2018 was, uh, 2018's uh, goals was to upscale uh, more people in how they can, you know, know how to scale infrastructures and you know get up to speed with emerging technologies as a kubernetes um, get on the you know be prepared for machine learning and ai stuff and so we started uh we did uh, we planned uh, the cloud study jam and the month of february we started with um, gcp essentials which is basically an intro on how people can start um, and get familiar with the google cloud platform and so from this month, uh, March uh, on the 3rd, we will be doing the Kubernetes Cloud Study Jam. We already have about 35 people who have signed up and who are ready to start. And uh, on a parallel note, we have GDG Nairobi uh, on a larger community scale that's doing it as well uh, and serving the whole community. So we hope that uh, we'll have more of this uh, Cloud Study Jams um, being, uh, being done. So after this, we're getting ready for the ML uh, Cloud uh, Study Jam. 
And so we're going step by step, you know, building the blocks, getting to infrastructure and baseline uh, infrastructure and data engineering, and then moving on to machine learning. Um, if you want to keep up to date, uh, you can join virtually as well. Um, just go to meetup.com, GGG Cloud Nairobi, and uh, send us a ping. Uh, doesn't matter where you're from, you can join us and um, we will just make all the arrangements to join in the, uh, add into our online community because the whole um, study jam is online and self-paced. And so anyone from any region can join. It's just that uh, the people in Nairobi will have a chance to join um, personally for the kickstart and a few, you know, have some uh, myself and James helping out. So if you want to have one in your, in your uh, city, just add the comments and, you know, we'll try and make sure that, you know, uh, we suggest to DevRel to at least assist in seeing how you can start. So thank you, Dale. On to you, Dale. Thank you, Kenneth. Um, if uh, anyone is working through the cloud certification process, uh, for instance, their company is asking them to become uh, professionally certified in Google Cloud, or they want to do that to put that on their CV or perhaps help with their jobs, and you're going through the certification process and you'd like some help, a number of the cloud GDEs um, have already been through that, um, Johan and Kimun and a, a few more of us. Um, have done the certification process before. And we know that it can be a little bit tough. Um, so if you'd like some help, uh, we're offering to mentor you or put you in touch with other people in the community who are going through that, either doing the cloud architect course or the data engineering course. Um, then let us know. We'll put a, a form up on the um, Hangout afterwards where you can fill that in with your name and email address and what sort of help you need, and we'll put you in touch with the correct people. We also have some uh, Quick Labs tokens. Um, so Quick Labs is a way for you to practice um, the, your training online. Um, as without needing credit card details, you can get online and uh, start using the cloud. Uh, so we've got a few of those tokens that we'd like to give away. Um, so let us know in that form that we'll post, and uh, yeah, and we'll send you some. There's also a few other meetups happening around uh, the place. So Kimun's going to tell us about what he's doing in Johannesburg. Cool. So there's a GDG Cloud Johannesburg and Cape Town that we are currently running in South Africa. And in these meetups, what we do is called a Google Cloud Fundamentals course, which is your, which is your first um, step towards getting your certification. You have to take this one day course in order to do both data engineering and um, cloud architect. And these courses are normally one day, which is um, held at the Google offices in Johannesburg and at Workshop 17 in Cape Town. The food and drinks are provided, so you don't have to pay for anything. It's, it's a free event, and you get to learn more about the Google Cloud Platform. You don't have to be a developer. You don't have to be any code writer. You just need to know how to learn the platform. It's more for decision makers or virtually anyone where it goes through the various products on the Google Cloud Platform. So please join our meetup to get further links and events on the day. Thanks, Kimun. Um, and me again. <laughs> Something else that I'm thinking uh, of doing is starting some cloud, uh, some study jams for specifically machine learning and data science. Um, so if this is something that you'd like to see in your city, um, please let me know. We'll also put a link to a sign-up form that we are, where we can keep you up to date. Um, this is in conjunction with the meetup, um, machine learning meetup group in Cape Town. And uh, the idea behind this is that a lot of us, uh, especially developers, have heard the buzzwords, maybe done a little bit of studying on our own, but want to join a community where we can learn from each other. Um, so we're probably going to work through on Saturdays, maybe once a month. Um, we get together, we learn and share our experiences um, in study jams. Um, we probably go through either the MIT or the Stanford um, courses. There's a bunch of tutorials on Kaggle. 
um, and a fantastic book which I've bought for myself, which is the Introduction to Statistical Learning, which has the handy um, PDF online of the full book. Um, the author has made it available. So if anyone who wants to get into the maths behind machine learning, it's also available. So we'll put that link up for the book afterwards. Um, so probably in April will be our intro course, um, assuming no one or that you don't have a, a background in machine learning. Um, so come along in April to Cape Town. We'll um, put some notices up on the Meetup group as well as um, email you if you fill in the form. Um, so April will be the intro, May being a little bit more detail, um, and then see how that goes for June and July. And as we go along, get industry experts and people who are using machine learning day to day to come and talk to us as well. And so we'll put the link up afterwards um, for you to, to let me know if you'd like to join in on this. And it doesn't just have to be if you're in Cape Town, we will make all of our content available. So, um, But if there is others that um, like uh, Kenneth who want to host um, machine learning study jams in Nairobi, and possibly we do some more in um, in Nigeria or throughout the continent, then yeah, let us know. So that uh, brings us towards the end of our show this evening. If you've got any questions, please let us know, and uh, we'll answer those. Um, the next shows in March is going to be hosted by Alex, and he's going to tell us what he's going to do next month. Excellent. Thank you, Dale. That was a great episode. Very informative. Before I talk about the next episode, I do actually have a question. It's not strictly cloud related, but Kimun, the boxing gloves behind you, I'm quite intrigued. Can you tell us the story behind that? So it's a boxing glove signed by um, Sugar Ray Le Leonard, who's a five times world champion. And we have clearly hanging it on our wall because to show that we are in the fighting spirits for Girl Cloud platform. <laughs> Excellent, thanks. That's that's pretty legit. <laughs> um, okay, so next episode. Now we might not have a Google Cloud region in Africa yet, but recently it actually became possible for developers to sell their apps and support in-app purchases through Google Play in another African country. So previously, only developers in Nigeria and Egypt were able to register Google Play merchant accounts, but now South Africa has joined that list. Hurrah! That means it's now possible to monetize your Android apps in South Africa. You can both charge for app downloads and offer in-app purchases and subscriptions. So in the next Developers on Air episode, I'll be sharing my experience of adding in-app purchases to Android apps. And I'll be focusing on what's possible, the best practices, as well as things to watch out for. So if you're interested in Android dev or making money, I suggest you join for the next episode, which will be in exactly three weeks from today. That's Thursday, the 22nd of March. So spread the word about that if you're interested in Android or making money. Cool. Thank you. Dale, back to you. Who isn't interested in making money? Thanks, Alex. Um, and then next, the month after that, in April, the 26th of April, we've got Mike presenting um, a show on the web. Do you want to give us a quick briefing on that, Mike? Yes. Um, so again, to sound like a stuck record, it is the year of PWA after all. Uh, we'll probably end up talking about progressive web apps. Um, I'd particularly like to showcase some stuff from the continent and see what people are building in the continent. Um, particularly looking at local data. Um, a lot of it is North American and European centric, and it would be really nice to see you know, what we're producing and what our demands are. So that'll be um, predominantly what we cover, um, and that'll be on the 26th of April, right? Yes, OK. Yeah, that's correct, um, 26th of April. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. And um, of course, then in May is Google I.O. So we'll definitely have a show about Google I.O. and feedback, all the things that we've learned there. In June, um, we're looking for some ideas. So if you've got a topic that you'd like to hear, please let us know. And then in July, it's uh, GCP Next, um, the Google Cloud Platform's next conference in San Francisco. So we're doing a feedback on that. So once again, if you would like to um, tweet, use the hashtag GoogleAfricaDevs. 
And all the links from the show will be posted afterwards. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next month. <laughs>